So uh, language um, localization. So in most of us, language ends up being localized in the left part of our brain. It's about uh, 90% uh, of us who will have the language area located in, in the left part of the brain, which coincides nicely with the fact that most of us also use the right hand as the dominant hand. For those of us who are using the left hand as the dominant hand, some of us have the language area in the right side of the brain, but almost an equal number of people have it in the left part of the brain. Uh, so, and there are also some people who use the right hand who have the uh, language area in the right part of the brain, but they are not very frequent. So it's basically located in, in the left side of the brain. It has something to do with the use of the hand, but it's not a strict, tight relationship. Uh, so basically, I, I think the truth is we don't really know why it ends up being located primarily in the left side of the brain. But it, it's kind of important that, that it is, and I'll come back to that. Uh, so we have these two areas. There's Broca's area. So if you get a hemorrhage in this part of the brain, you lose your ability of making fluent speech. Uh, it's a motor area, which is not the area which is directly involved in controlling the muscles. Uh, the control of the muscles is located in the primary motor cortex in, in this area. Uh, so the Broca area is kind of a uh, higher uh, motor area, which is many way, in many ways part of the premotor cortex and which puts together uh, the motor program which is necessary in order to produce speech and then sends that information to the primary motor cortex which is responsible for activating the actual muscles. So people who have a hemorrhage in Broca's area do not necessarily have any affection of their ability of using the tongue or using the muscles in um, uh, the larynx and, and to be able to uh, produce uh, muscle activity but it's in the control, it's in the formation of the uh, language that they're lacking. So they can make sounds and they often make sounds, but they end up having to use more or less the same sounds in order to uh, try and produce uh, 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 any kind of language. Uh, I, I remember uh, when, when I was a child, one of our neighbors had uh, aphasia. I didn't know that at the time. He was just this weird old person who was uh, always shouting at us. And the only thing he could say was, Dreng. So he was shouting at us continuously, and the only thing if, if he was, and we didn't even know whether he was mad at us or whether he just wanted to have our attention, maybe to give us some candy or whatever, uh, but he would just be shouting Dang! constantly. Uh, and that was the only thing he could do. Um, and, and this is the situation that they have. The problem that they have is that intellectually they are usually quite well functioning, so there's no problem in their thoughts and they know what they want to say, but it's really, really hard to do it. But they understand everything which is being said to them. They can read, uh, they can write, uh, but it's the expression of language which is difficult. Uh, and this can be uh, quite important to, to uh, know that it is like this, because very often these people are treated as if they are stupid, which they definitely are not, and they understand what is being said to them, but they cannot answer back. And uh, I've encountered, when I was a medical student, uh, several doctors who sort of uh, overlooked the fact that they had to do with a patient with a lesion in Bruckers area rather than a patient with a lesion in the century Wernicke's area, uh, because in this situation, the patient actually understands what is being said. And if you make a demonstration with the students, it's reasonable to sort of make sure that uh, you speak politely and uh, that you uh, do not say anything which could disturb the patient. And this uh, 
doctor apparently uh, thought that the patient had a sensory deficit and therefore believed that the patient wasn't un able to understand what he was saying and uh, therefore he ended up saying things that the patient very clearly did not like uh, but wasn't able to express. It, it's one of the most embarrassing uh, experiences that I've ever had. People who have uh, lesions in Wernicke's area uh, have a true sensory deficit. So they're, they're not able to understand what is being said to them. Uh, they don't understand what they read and they don't understand what they're saying themselves. So they have an idea in their head what they want to say but it comes out in a wrong way and they have no way of hearing that what they're saying is wrong. So they talk fluently they make grammatically correct sentences, but they make absolutely no sense usually. Uh, so it's like their mind is just overspilling into language. So these people are usually talking continuously, but they're just babbling uh, without making any sense out of it. Uh, I, I encountered one of these patients uh, some years ago and, and, and she was, it, it was just amazing. It, it was a, a constant flow of associations coming from, uh, and, and even within the same sentence, she would be sort of in three different universes basically and jumping from one thing to the other. Uh, what came out was sort of, I, I mean, it, it's not like it was, uh, uh, psychiatric disorder or anything. So, so, I mean, it was normal thoughts, but all coming on top of each other and, and within the same sentence. And she, she would sort of uh, be talking about her uh, daughter in law in Roskile and then about what she had to buy in the shop and uh, what her husband had been saying the day before, and all put into one sentence. And the next sentence, she would be still thinking obviously about these three things at the same time and still putting it into the same sentence but all coming on top of each other. She had absolutely no control of what was coming out through her mouth because she just didn't understand what she was saying herself. Uh, it's, it's kind of fascinating to just sit there and listen to another person's thoughts just coming out completely uncontrolled. Uh, really, really fascinating. Um, so th this is uh, what, what is sort of uh, the, the basic idea that uh, you, you have the auditory cortex, you have the visual cortex, so you can read uh, whatever uh, language information or you can hear whatever language information. You could even feel it if you're reading uh, Bray, uh, you, you could feel the uh, letters and, and uh, read the sentences and all of that information will then go into Wernicke's area and from there be sent through this arcuate fasciculus, a bunch of fibers uh, running to Bruckers area which is sort of the motor area, uh, premotor cortex area and then into the primary motor cortex and then to uh, the muscles. So that organization is quite similar to what we also see in the case of uh, control of our limbs, uh, that we have the parietal areas where we have area five and area seven, which feeds into the premotor cortex and then into the primary motor cortex, and then we can produce um, uh, movement.